We've called the series that we've been going through leading up to a miracle offering, we've called it God Will Be Praised. And our desire and our prayer is that through the offering that we're going to give together, that God will receive the glory. It won't be about the name of Watoto Church. It won't be about the name of Gary and Marilyn Skinner. It will be about the name of Jesus. That's our desire. And uh, we've been looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and, and chapter 9, and we saw Paul traveling among the churches that he had planted and he was raising an offering uh, for believers in Jerusalem who were going through a very, very difficult time. And uh, there was famine and persecution in Jerusalem, challenges of every kind. And Paul, who had planted churches in various regions, travels to these churches, raising an offering and giving the churches an opportunity to contribute towards a relief fund that would help the believers in Jerusalem and meet their needs. And one of the churches that really stood out as Paul collected this offering was a group of churches in the region of Macedonia. And uh, we recognize that uh, Macedonia was not a very rich area. It was a poor area. But the churches heard about the offering that Paul was collecting because he hadn't even asked them. He, that's how poor they were. He hadn't asked them. But when they heard of the offering that he was collecting, they wrote to Paul and said, Paul, please give us the opportunity to give. The Bible says they begged for the opportunity to give and we see that they raised such a great offering and and Paul uses the Macedonian church as he writes to the Corinthian church he writes to them saying look at what the Macedonians have done hey as you excel in everything else that you do continue to excel in the area of generosity just as the Macedonians have done and we noted that the, the Macedonians gave generously they gave sacrificially first of all they gave over and above what Paul expected. They gave of and above. They gave sacrificially. But they also gave willingly. They begged for the opportunity to give. But also, they gave in faith. They were living in a poor um, uh, part of the world, but they were not limited by their situation. They rose above their situation and they gave in faith. And we said, as Watoto Church, that is to be our culture, especially as we give in the miracle offering. Let's do it sacrificially. Let's do it willingly, but let's give in faith. Faith. And uh, last week we talked about uh, the fact that whenever we give, our giving has an impact. And that God is praised through the impact of our generosity. Paul writes to the Corinthian church and he says, hey, your giving, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. And we said when we give of our miracle offering, we're able to meet physical needs, but we're also able to meet spiritual needs. When you meet a physical need, God is praised. Jesus said, when you never you do it to the least of these, you have done it to me. But we also saw that God takes what we give physically and he translates it into great spiritual impact. Uh, throughout our giving, what other church, we've seen more people come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ than ever before. 10,000 teenagers over the last three years giving their lives to Jesus Christ. Through the three celebration extension points that we've planted, more than 3,000 people giving their lives to Jesus Christ. We're seeing incredible spiritual impact because of our generosity. And this is it, friends. God God is praised through our generosity. Today, we want to wrap up our series, God Will Be Praised, and we're saying uh, that it is more blessed to give than to receive. Now, when we give, there is incredible impact in the life of of the one that receives because a physical need is met. There is spiritual impact in their lives. But the Bible says it is more blessed to give because the giver is also blessed. Amen. And I want to encourage you as we give in a miracle offering this weekend, God can't wait to pour out a blessing on your life. Because it is more blessed to give. The, the giver also experiences the blessing of God. And I, I encourage you. Come ready to give your very best next weekend. I know that as you give to advance the kingdom of God, you'll experience the blessing of God. A story is told of a, a guy who owned a company. And he was ready for transition. He was tired and was beginning to think, hey, you know what, I need to hand over the company. And uh, he gathers his executives in a room. Now, this guy had children. But he, he wanted to find the right person to hand the company to. So he gathers his executives in the building and he says, one of you guys is going to be the next CEO. I'm ready to hand this thing over. And the guys were excited. Every one of them had been waiting for their short and saying, hey, one day it's going to be my turn. So he says, yeah, one of you guys is going to be the next CEO. 
But I have some seeds here with me that I'd like to give you. And I want you to take these seeds for the next year. Look after the plant that, that, that germinates out of this seed. And whoever has the best plant will be the next CEO. And these guys are like, all right, bring it on. And so he hands them these seeds. And they left and began to nurture the seed and the plant and look after it. One of these executives was a guy called Jim. Jim took the seed that had been given to him, and he planted it in a pot. But after five weeks, nothing was happening. He wondered what's wrong with this seed. He watered it and did everything he could to make sure that that seed was growing. After six months, nothing was happening. He was so worried. He spoke to his wife. He said, are, are we doing something wrong? She said, no, just keep doing what you're doing. Uh, it will grow. And he was afraid because all the other executives were sending him pictures of what their plants were looking like. And they were growing. And they were shaping them. They were green. They were beautiful. And he was worried. After one year, nothing, nothing had happened to his plant. And the day came. They had to meet the owner. And so everyone carried the plant to office. Man, some guys are these beautiful looking plants. So they walked into the office. Everyone had their plant there. And Jim came with his empty pot. He felt so embarrassed, so he stood in the back with his pot. He was worried. And the owner walks in, and these guys are waiting, and they're now comparing. Hey, you see, mine is here, and yours is here. I'm going to be the next CEO. I just want to announce to you guys, hey, start to congratulate me before anything happens. And Jim is worried. And so... The owner walked in and began to congratulate, guys, your plant looks great. And he's, and Jim is in the back and saying, oh, no. Then the owner said, uh, are you ready? I'm going to announce the next CEO. And they, they were excited. And he said, Jim, come here. Jim was afraid. He knew he was going to get fired. He hadn't produced after a year. And these other guys were looking at him as he walked towards the owner. They just looked at him like, we're so sorry. We're so sorry. He walks to the front. The, the owner looked at him and said, what happened? He said, I did everything I could. It didn't grow. So I just brought it back. So the owner looked at the guys and said, ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce to you your next CEO. The guys are like, what? This guy's done nothing. He had nothing. He produced nothing. Look at my plant. Look at how green and how big and how nice. I said, you know what, friends? I gathered you here a year ago, and I told you I was going to choose the next CEO, and I gave you some seeds to plant. And, and, and I had boiled those seeds so they were dead. I gave them to you to plant. And you must have discovered along the way that those seeds were dead. So you swapped them with another seed and, and you came up with a plant. And I want to honor Jim who's been so honest and faithful. So ladies and gentlemen, here is your next CEO. I you know the lesson I picked from that, friends, is this. You reap what you sow. If you plant honesty, you will reap trust. If you plant goodness, you will reap friends. If you plant humility, you will reap greatness. If you plant hard work, you will reap success. If you plant forgiveness, you will reap reconciliation. At the end of the day, you reap what you sow. And as we give this coming weekend, that principle is so true. We're going to be giving money. But I look at that money as a seed that we are planting in the fertile ground, which is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we're giving to advance the kingdom of God and his influence and his lordship across the world. 
And we have this great opportunity to take our seed, which is our finances, and place it in the fertile ground, which is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe, friends, because we've given to the gospel, because we've given to advancing the cause of Jesus across the world, I believe that God is going to allow us the privilege of harvesting a great harvest from our seed that we are going to sow. This is a kingdom principle. We are not manipulating you. Mark chapter 4 tells us that that is what the kingdom of God is like. This is a kingdom principle. And one of the ways we sow, we can sow in so many ways. There's so many ways that we can sow. In our time, with our talents, with our wisdom, with our kindness, with our grace, with our mercy towards others, we are sowing. But one of the ways that God calls us to sow is through our finances. In fact, through the prophet Malachi, he says, listen, test me in this. He says, if you are faithful in returning the tithes and the offering, look out. I'm going to pour out a blessing so heavy upon you, you won't have room enough to contain it. And the blessing that we reap for the money that we give is not just money. It's so much more than the money that we give. God allows our relationships to thrive. He causes us to be blessed in our work. We experience the favor of God. God protects us from the hand of the enemy. Some of you, as you gave last year in the miracle offering, up to now you've never visited the doctor because God has blessed you with divine health. Because when you sow, you will reap. It is a kingdom principle. But it is possible also that you will rip money and get back money. God is not an ATM machine where we just throw a card and rip money. That's not how he works. God's plan is so much bigger than our finances. In fact, God doesn't need our finances. He's sufficient. He can do without our finances. But he gives us this great opportunity, and that's what Paul was telling the Corinthians. Look at what the Macedonians have done. Hey, do not miss out on this opportunity. We have brothers and sisters in Jerusalem who have some real needs, and we have this opportunity to contribute so that we can meet their needs. And then he tells them, listen, this is what God is going to do for you. He's going to bless you. So 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 to 11, in your Bibles, if you can turn there with me. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 to 11. I'll read from the Passion Translation. Paul says, here is my point. A stingy sower will reap a meager harvest. But the one who sows from a generous spirit will reap an abundant harvest. In other words, if you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. But if you sow generously, you will reap generously. It tells them, let giving flow from your heart, not from a sense of religious duty. Let it spring up freely from the joy of giving. All because God loves hilarious generosity. In other words, God loves a cheerful giver. Says yes. God is more than ready to overwhelm you with every form of grace. So that you will have more than enough of everything, every moment and in every way. Wow. He will make you overflow with abundance in every good thing you do. What a promise. Just as the scriptures say about the one who trusts in him, because he has sown extravagantly and given to the poor, his kindness and generous deeds will never be forgotten. God takes note of our giving. He does. He watches over our giving because he cannot wait to reward us for our giving. And says those who give extravagantly, sacrificially, willingly, hilariously, those who give generously, God is taking note of our giving and he is more than ready to bless us. Says this generous God who supplies abundant seed for the farmer, which becomes bread for our meals, is even more extravagant towards you. In other words, God is no man's debtor. When God gives, he's also the God of multiplication. He returns it to you in a way that is exceedingly great. And I love the fact that he says God supplies the seed. Everything we are going to give in the miracle offering comes from God. And we are taking what God has given us, and we are giving it back to him. 
so that his lordship will be known across the world, so that his grace and his goodness and his provision will be known around the world. That is the seed that we are planting. Not only does he give us seed, he gives us bread that we live on every day. So don't be worried, friends. Yes, you're going to give sacrificially in the miracle offering, but you will not lack any good thing. God will take care of you, for he's the one who gives seed and he also supplies bread. Paul told them, first he supplies every need plus more. Then he multiplies the seed as you saw it so that the harvest of your generosity will grow. We read last week that God will cause us to be rich on every occasion, so that we can be generous on every occasion. And this is not just a, a wealth of money, but God allows us, we read it, for His grace to abound in every area of our life, so that we can be generous. The goal of God's provision is so that you will be generous. It's not just about you getting more and more and more. It's about you giving more and more and more. And the Bible is telling us here that God multiplies the seed. And when he multiplies the seed, he multiplies the harvest. Says you'll be abundantly enriched in every way as you give generously on every occasion. For when we take your gifts to those in need, it causes many to give thanks to God. So I'm reminded of three things here real quickly. Number one, you reap what you sow. And Paul is telling the Corinthians, hey, we have this opportunity. And in fact, when you read it in the NIV, it, it ends in verse 15, around verse 15, Paul is saying, and their hearts will go out to you, will go out to God on your behalf in prayer. In other words, hey, as you give, there are people around the world praying for you that God will even bless you so much more. So you reap what you sow, your kindness. When you give to Syria and we're able to build 10,000 homes for refugees. God takes note of your generosity, friends. And as you have built a place for refugees, listen, God who sits in heaven is faithful and he will bless you for it. You will reap what you sow. It's a kingdom principle. He tells them in verse 6, a stingy sower will reap a meager harvest. But the one who sows from a generous spirit will do what? Will reap an abundant harvest. So you reap what you sow. And remember, it's not about the amount. It's not about the amount. Giving is a heart issue. It's not your bank account that matters. It's your heart account that matters. It's a heart issue. It flows out of our hearts. You can give a big amount and still not be generous. Because we have to give in proportion to what we have. But every once in a while, God calls us to give over and above, sacrificially. And when we give sacrificially, it hurts. But don't be worried. The God to whom you're giving is able to supply for all of your needs according to his riches in glory. We are planting a seed. God will allow us to reap a great harvest. In everything we do, we have our part. God has his part. Our part is to sow. God will watch over the seed and he will give us a harvest. We give in faith. And our generosity is a trigger to the blessing of God in our lives. Paul reminded them in 2 Corinthians 9, 8, God is more than ready to overwhelm you in every form of grace. So that you will have more than enough of everything in your relationships, in your work, in your academics, in your businesses, uh, in, in everything that you do, God wants to bless you. But the trigger is our generosity. It says you'll make you overflow with abundance in every good thing you do. So we reap what we sow. We sow generously, we reap generously. It's a kingdom principle. But number two, you reap after you sow. Like we said, God has his part, and we have our part. And our part is to reap, I mean to sow. And God will allow us to reap in the measure that we have sown. And even so much more, because he's a God of multiplication. You reap after you sow. 
God has designed that life works out in seasons. The Bible tells us under heaven there is a time and season for everything. There is a time to plant and there is a time to harvest. And this weekend, we get ready to plant. But friends, look out. God who is faithful will allow you to harvest in Jesus' name. This is our season. Don't let the season pass you by. Don't be like a farmer who sleeps during the rains and wakes up in the hottest part of the year and he's wondering about his harvest. Make the most of this season. Plug in into what God is doing. God will bless you for it. Psalm 126, verse 5 to 6. Those who walk the fields to sow, casting their seeds in tears, will one day tread those same long rows, amazed by what's appeared. Those who weep as they walk and plant with sighs will return singing with joy when they bring home the harvest. God is faithful. Now this is the season for us to sow. God will allow us to reap. So you reap what you sow. You reap after you sow. Lastly, you reap more than you sow. And God is faithful. Think about a seed. You take a seed from an orange and you plant it. You don't just get another orange. You got a whole tree of oranges. And when you plant more, you get even more trees. You can get a forest full of oranges. Because our God is so faithful. And he watches over our seed. He allows us to reap an abundant harvest. And friends, I want to declare over you that as you give this coming week, and by the grace of God, he's going to allow you to reap an abundant harvest in Jesus' name. If you believe it, shout, I receive it. I want to close with this testimony. It's a lady called Joyce, and she wrote out her testimony. In 2017, during the Watoto Miracle Missions Offering period, I told God, I think this time, you know, I can't participate. How do I participate when I have two loans and one with a money lender? In the picture that you see up there, she was building a big grass-thatched structure for a children's retreat center in Chitende, for which she had gotten a loan. She says, we had underestimated the cost, so we had to borrow money again from a money lender in order to finalize the roof. Otherwise, we would lose whatever we had done before it was a rainy season. So you can see the roof there as they're working on it. She says, we kept borrowing, hoping that we would finish, but every time we had to, but every time we had to add more and the bill was accumulating. One day, a friend called while I was at the construction site and I chatted with her about what was going on and how we had borrowed money to complete the roof. Towards the time for miracle offering, I got a strong conviction that I should give a certain amount no matter what the financial situation was that we were going through. Then my heart was really troubled. I honestly thought that money would reduce the loan from the money lender, but the conviction became stronger. Then I decided that once I get paid, I will immediately withdraw the money before I do anything else and put it in the envelope, seal it, and keep it until the miracle offering Sunday. I asked the children what they wanted to give for the miracle offering, and they told me how much they wanted to give. But one of them insisted on a certain amount of money for which I had been convicted, and at that point I knew that was it. On the Friday before the miracle offering, a voice in me said, God loves a cheerful giver. So at that moment, I told the children, let's dance and then pray for the miracle offering now. We started dancing. And while holding our envelopes, going around in circles, we wrote our prayer requests on the envelopes and prayed over them. And then we went to sleep. On Saturday morning at 5.30 a.m., I got a missed call from that same friend with whom I'd had the phone conversation at the site. I called back worried that she might have a problem. When I called back, she told me, I've been thinking about the loan you have with the money lender, and I've got a conviction that I should clear all of it. Wow. Then 
She also told me to ask the children what toys they wanted, and she would send them those toys. By the end of Saturday, half of the money had been sent, and by the time I came to church on Sunday for miracle offering, all my debt had been paid, and she says, Hallelujah! Look at the picture of her place now that it is completed. Look, it's beautiful. You know, that is Joyce's story. On a day, you were told the church to believe God. And to give your very best offering this coming weekend. Yes, God has spoken to you about a figure that is blessed on your heart. It may seem big. It may seem painful. But trust God and give. I promise you, God will allow you the privilege of seeing the harvest before your very eyes. You will reap such a harvest, it will result in thanksgiving to God because it's more blessed to give than to receive. Those who receive our giving, the gift from our giving, are going to be blessed. But as the giver, God is going to pour out his blessing upon you in a measure that is pressed down, shaken together, running over. Will you give him praise and glory in the house for that? I want to conclude with this scripture in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24 to 25. Scripture tells us the world of the generous gets larger and larger. The world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. The one who blesses others is abundantly blessed. Those who help others are helped. We have a great opportunity this weekend, friends. Don't miss out. Don't miss out. My family and I are ready to give. Hey, come ready to give this coming weekend. I know that our giving is going to result in thanksgiving to God, and God will be praised. Will you give him glory and thank him for his word today?